Hi guys, I'm Ralph. Um, today we're going to be discussing the Truck Norris camshaft. There's two versions of the camshaft. We'll go into detail about both of them, benefits, uh, knockoffs, you know, whatever. Um, my channel is based on budget mods. Uh, I try to do the best bang for your buck and doing things as right as possible as far as how, yeah, as much as your wallet can manage. I usually do one mod at a time and I like to test it in the real world. I like to drive it as much as possible, put it in traffic, uh, run it to and from work, you know, throw some loads in the back of my truck and haul booty and, you know, just to get a good feel for it. And uh, this information helps you at all. Follow, like, share. You know, if it inspires you to get off the couch and turn some wrenches, if, it, if you've been thinking about getting a camshaft for your vehicle and this helps you in any way, just respond to me. Leave, leave some, some sort of info in the comments because I'm doing this because I feel like I can help people. I've been building motors for 30 years. I just recently discovered the LS a couple of years ago and it's one of the easiest motors and easiest ways to build power that there is that, that I have seen. And uh, yeah, so on with the video. So today, today we're going to be discussing Truck Norris camshaft. Uh, I put mine in a 5.3 Silverado last December. Uh, the, the specs on the standard is the intake side is 212, the exhaust is 22X, big secret I guess, and the lift is 552. Now there's a, another version of the exact same camshaft. The only difference is it has slightly less lift and it's called the no springs required. You can put this cam in using the stock push rods, the stock springs, uh, stock lifters. I wouldn't do that personally, but if you're on a budget, you're talking 400 bucks for a camshaft. And this camshaft is nice. I I've been using mine for about six months now. I've, I've got, I've drove from Alabama to Tennessee on it. I've drove from Alabama to Florida on it. Um, with both of these cams, you can get away with using the factory stall converter. Now, would you get more benefits with an aftermarket stall? Sure, of course you would. Just like you'd get more benefits with an aftermarket intake and exhaust and heads and throwing a little boost on it. But for the budget-friendly person, you can put this camshaft in and drive it anywhere you want. The manners are a little more aggressive at, say, a stop sign or a red light and maybe getting stuck in traffic. But with a good tune on it, I mean, you almost don't even know what's in there except for listening to the sound. Um, you can definitely feel the power from, uh, say, about 2,500 up to 6,500. You can feel you can feel that motor come alive. It's it's pretty amazing. It's the best bang for your buck that I've ever seen as far as a single part, other than you know nitrous boost something like that. But and, and the installation's not a big deal. I'm not going to get into that very much. There's a crap ton of videos on, on YouTube about how to install the cams or what have you, but uh, I will go into a few, uh, a few uh, specs on it as far as stock horsepower versus uh, the NSR horsepower versus the standard horsepower. And there's not a lot of difference between the NSR and the standard. Um, I typically go to Richard Holdner when I want info and specs and stats. And uh, if you don't know who Richard Holdner is, you need to check him out. I'll put a link to the video that I got my info off of as far as the specs goes. I'll put it in the description of the, of the video. But uh, he tested a bone stock truck engine, 5.3, right out of the wrecking yard. Still had the truck intake on it, uh, factory 706 heads. Now he took all the accessories off except for an electric water pump and he had long tube headers on it. But uh, at the crank, the 5.3 put out 364 horsepower and 386 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty impressive. I know the factory rates them around, you know, between 290 and 315, depending on what year, what motor, what have you. But uh, the NSR Truck Norris Cam, the only modification he made to this motor, produced 421 crank horsepower, 417 crank foot-pounds of torque that is a huge gain anywhere from the 60 to 70 horsepower range and you can just imagine how much more how much more power you're going to pick up if you swap out the heads uh bigger valves more free-flowing intake and lord have mercy put some boost on it so you're going to get the torque gain the horsepower gain 60 to 70 on the horsepower 40 50 60 on the torque but the main thing to me with this cam and why I chose it over all the others, you don't lose anything on your bottom end. And this truck is easily 5,500 pounds, if not more. Uh, it's full bumper truck, got a, a camper shell on the back. It's a heavy truck. And you need that torque to get you moving. 
Now, in my in my opinion, the NSR cam for the budget guy definitely the way to go. Um, you know, I went the other route, but I, I'm planning on more mods. And I know in the future, you know, there's about anywhere from seven to ten horsepower torque difference between the NSR cam and the standard cam. But I know over time with different mods, that's going to multiply. That may, I mean, I, I am going to. Uh, I've got a set of heads that's already ready to go on it. I'll be testing that next. Um, but as you, as you start building your motor and building up and start bringing the power up, more mods are going to take advantage of the extra airflow and the extra fuel flow that your, your cam is providing for you. So it will multiply over time. If, you know, if you're looking for 1,000 horsepower, I'd go you know, with the standard route. If you're looking for five 600 horsepower, you can almost do that without even a power adder these days. So for you guys who are planning on or even thinking about the Truck Norris cam, like I said, I'll leave a link to Richard's video. He's got several videos on the Truck Norris. Um, that I just don't see any way you could possibly go wrong. It's 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 almost a brainless you know decision to make. And between twenty five hundred and sixty five hundred, my my truck is an absolute beast. And there's no, I mean I've got a few other mods. Uh, you know, look at my channel. You can see a few budget friendly things that I've done. Without a doubt, I'm, I've got at least 400 horsepower to the crank, but uh, after looking at Richard's numbers, I'm probably more at the 450, 460 range at the crank. Um, the truck gets down. For a heavy truck, it gets down. So uh, if, this guy's, if, if this helps you guys at all, I mean, if it inspires you to get off the couch, turn some wrenches, um, just subscribe, like. Check out some of my other videos. My wife gets involved. She does a lot of a lot of teaching videos where she's teaching her sister how to do basic car maintenance. Uh, my kids get involved. Uh, my six-year-old daughter, she's been involved in nearly everything I've done. And you'll find her on just about all of my videos. But uh, for 400 bucks, the NSR Truck Norris, $400, about $100 in gasket, 500 bucks for 60 to 70 horsepower. Other than Booster Nitrous, you're not going to find anything that gives you anywhere near that kind of power except for you know booster nitrous but the sound is amazing i will put a clip in here of mine now i've got mine idled up a little high but it's, that's my preference but uh if you idle it down around the 700 range she absolutely hits a lick and tire smoking that's this truck's business now thanks guys